Hey everyone, in this video I'm just going to be showing you my process for drawing this character here. It's been a long time since I've actually done a video of me drawing, so I thought this one would be a pretty cool character to do. This is a Rondir from the New Rings of Power series, so that's the Lord of the Rings Amazon series. You guys that follow the channel know I'm a huge Lord of the Rings nerd. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out a ton. And don't forget to like and switch notifications on for future content. The style that I went for here is a little bit more unusual than my normal style. I really enjoy sketching, but I don't very often do sort of clean line art and things like that, but I gave it a go. And this first section that you're watching here is me using Clip Studio Paint, also known as Manga Studio. And I use this for the line art because it's so much easier to get smooth lines because of the G Pen tool that they have. It's just far better and much easier than using Photoshop brushes in my opinion. But not everyone really wants a smooth effect, so that's fair enough. But yeah, this is just me going over my sketch on a new layer. I'm using red so that I can differentiate between the sketch. Of course, I turned the layer down a little bit as well, but having them both in like greys and black made it a little bit more difficult to see clearly. Whereas having it red makes the line art stand out, it's a lot clearer, and then once I'm done, I can really easily just change that to black. It's worth noting I didn't record the sketch for this one. I wish I had have done, but honestly, I wasn't expecting this one to turn out well at all. It was really just me doodling around and playing at first. However, it turned out quite good and it had a lot of likeness for me. I find that getting a character's likeness is the trickiest thing to get. So once I was done, I was really gutted that I didn't record it, but I thought at the very least, I'm gonna record the rest of the process. So part one is just getting the clean line out. I think a lot of you guys are familiar with that already. In this next section, I'm actually just trying to get in the lights and the darks, the shadows, almost like doing values, but my values aren't necessarily too accurate. The first thing I did was to create a clipping mask all around my line art. That was just so that it's a little bit easier for me to stick within the lines. I can then lock that layer and I don't have to worry about being as neat. I have a tutorial on that one actually, so I will put links on screen and in the description box below for those that are interested. So I created one layer to start from with this flat color and then on the layer above that, I started going in with my darkest darks. And you'll see if you look at the layers on the right hand side, I create a new layer each time I want a different value, a different level of shading. To be honest, I was trying to keep this quite basic and not have too many different values. So not too many different lights and darks. However, by the end of the video, I did have more than I intended. So I'm going for more of a cell shaded look. And what actually inspired this, I recently started supporting Patrick Brown on his Patreon page. And for those of you who are not familiar with his work, he is an incredible artist, mainly known for his Marvel stuff, but his style is so good. So this was my attempt of actually replicating it or getting some similarities and supporting him on Patreon meant that I had access to all of his tutorials and within one of those he talks about his rendering process which is where I got all this from. So this was really just me trying to replicate it. Again, I don't really render or finish painted pieces often. As mentioned, I often sketch something and then I'm usually bored of it. So this was a bit of a challenge for me. And I am working directly from reference as well. So this was more of a rendering exercise. I haven't made anything up myself, unfortunately. Otherwise that would have been cool, but I'm not quite there yet. The brushes that I'm using at this point are just the standard Photoshop brushes, by the way. And I'm sticking with the harder edged ones as well. So we're not doing much sort of soft shading. We're sticking to that cell shaded look. Anyway, once I was happy with the values or happy enough, the next step to this method is to have different colors on different layers and hopefully you can tell what I mean by that from the video. But for example, I separate his cloak onto a separate layer and I color that blue. I separate his eyes onto a separate layer. I think his iris and the whites of his eyes, probably not necessary, but I just wanted everything separate. His lips are also on a separate layer. And last of all, I think it was his hair that I put on a separate layer. So if you were doing a really big piece, you'd have a ton of different layers here. Luckily, this is only quite a simple one, but it's more than enough for me to start on. And it's quite comical looking at it at this stage. Before I've added layer effects to it, it kind of looks like he is a drag queen at this point with some really strong makeup on the lips. So now we're actually onto the slightly confusing bit, but to give you a very simplified explanation, I'm basically duplicating that value layer 
for each of these separate colors. Then I'm going back onto the layer of the color. So for example, his cloak layer or his lips layer, his eyes layer or his hair layer. And I'm switching that to a color mode instead of normal. And that means it's actually picking up the values below that layer and using those within the color. So yes, it still has the color, but it also has the values. It has the lights and darks. So it's very important to get the shadows and lighting done early on for this method. So where you're seeing it now is pretty much where I got to using this style, but I wasn't quite happy. People who are good at this style, I think make it look absolutely epic. For me, it was definitely missing a lot and I'm still not there with this style. So I decided to go in and add a few final touches. So for example, I added a little bit more color to his face, a little bit of reds to his cheek, nose and forehead. It is turned right down though, so it's very subtle. I did start going in and adding some reflection light you might see there, but I think I actually redid this a few times, so you might be able to ignore that. A lot of this I end up redoing, correcting, etc. But for example, in an ideal world, I should have got the values right for the eyes, so that when I applied this color layer, they're already how I wanted them. But I like to go in afterwards, especially with the eyes, and do them separately, add more highlights, more shadows, exaggerate them a little bit. If anything, I've gone a little bit over the top because they're a little bit too sparkly, let's call them. But it kind of works for an elf character. And because I don't like painting too much, I wanted this cell shading look, but it was just a little bit too clean for me. So I went in with just another standard Photoshop brush turned down and I started scribbling lines in. Now I know to some people this is really messy and it is. This is the kind of sketch style that I'm used to. So I'm actually trying to use pencil strokes here or brush strokes and blend some of the darks into some of the lights and vice versa. You'll notice when I'm zoomed in, it does look very messy. It's definitely not a clean look, but as I say, I feel like this is more towards where my style is going. I'm more comfortable doing it this way. And with the hair, I tried to add a little bit of texture just with a few dots just to match his hair texture. So in the shadow areas, just adding a little bit more of the lighter areas and in the lighter areas, bringing the shadow in a little bit just to create that textured look. Most of this was on one layer above everything else we did earlier, but below the line art. Another thing I'm doing here is I am locking the line art layer and I'm then going in and lightening it to match whatever's below it just a little bit so it's still dark but just not quite as harsh. Again I do already have a tutorial showing you how to do this so I'll put links again for anything that's related to this video in the description box below so make sure you check that out. And the last thing I do here on camera is I go in with some bounce light or a reflection light. So just on this bottom left side I'm having it as if there's something sort of blue-ish just reflecting onto his face. Pretty self-explanatory I think. It just makes it pop a little bit more. But that's pretty much it guys. Off camera I did stick a photo texture behind this. It's quite subtle but I really like the effect this gives. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you picked up some tips. Definitely let me know in the comments below if there's anything in particular you guys want to know. Any tutorials etc. Make sure you check out my social media pages to see more of my art. Again links below. And aside from that, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button and switch notifications on. Thanks so much for watching everyone.